I got one final thing, and it's involving my comments about J.J. McCarthy and white quarterback privilege. And I am blown away. Well, I shouldn't be blown away because I should expect it. I look like a white person. I am a white person. Race is race. Culture is culture. My family's from Cuba. Part of my family's from Italy. Father was born in Cuba, so I'm a first generation. I was. Did that make me a first generation American? Is that what you call it? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. So, I look at I look at things from a a wider view. What the fuck is the deal with the white people, white Americans in this country? Fucking so triggered by the term white privilege. You fucking have it. I have it. If I go to Kansas. Do I look like a Cuban? No, I look like a fucking Irishman with a red beard. When I get pulled over by a cop, I'm a white dude. So why the fuck do people not think that white privilege translates over to football? How many quarterbacks in the NFL right now are black in a league that's 75% black? 10? How many coaches? Six? There was three last year. There's six now. And we're going to sit here and be delusional and sit here and say that J.J. McCarthy from Michigan is not getting white privilege as a quarterback? The guy that threw for less than 200 yards in five of his last six games of the season last year and whenever he played a good team, he didn't do shit? Jumping him over Michael Penix, who was one of the best players in the country last year, and the only reason Washington was in the national championship was because of Michael Penix? Yeah, I got people argue with me on our, po- on our post, and you saw it, Nick, I mean, giving me all kinds of deflections. Deflect, deflect. Oh, well, Taylor Bloom is the number one pick. Jaden Daniels is ranked in the top four. So they earned it on the field. No one was was sitting here and saying that black quarterbacks haven't been drafted number one. The whole topic is about white quarterbacks getting a privilege that black quarterbacks don't typically get. Yes, did did one black QB get the workout warrior award last year? Anthony Richardson? Absolutely. Did he deserve to be drafted? Fuck no. Is he going to bust out in four years? Yeah, he'll be out of the league in four years. These teams consistently think that they can change and fix guys that are not good in college. They keep doing it, and it's exhausting. And when I listen to these people from Michigan primarily, because they all they, the first thing they give it away is, you must be an Ohio State fan. When you both know I was cheering for Michigan. I can't stand Ohio State. I'm not a Michigan State fan. I'm not an Ohio State fan. I was cheering for Michigan. J.J. McCarthy is an average quarterback. He's not a star, and you want to draft him in the top six, you're going to go get yourself Daniel Jones. You're going to get yourself Mitchell Trubisky. I read, a, I read the profile of Mitchell Trubisky. Let me ask you two guys real quick before we go. Mitchell Trubisky, his positives were upside. That was one of his positives, his upside. What does that mean? I don't know. You know what I said for his negatives? He lacks experience. Doesn't that mean the same thing? Yep. They somehow made the same thing, a positive and a negative for Mitchell Trubisky. And then at the same time, mind you, the Tar Heels, UNC played the same offense that Texas Tech had. Shotgun, spread offense. Patrick Mahomes in that same draft pass. Patrick Mahomes graded out higher than Trubisky in everything. And somehow Mitchell Trubisky is the second pick in the draft. And Mahomes is the 10th. Explain that. Explain it. You have general managers who, whether they want to ever admit it or not, have internal inherent biases because for many, many years, black QBs were said to be unintelligent. Am I wrong? Nope. Warren Moon dealt with that shit 35 years ago, 40 years ago, whatever it was, 35 years ago. CFL legend. Yeah. Like, all these guys, Randall Cunningham dealt with it. Uh, What did they say? Lamar Jackson scored a 13 on the Wonderlick. You know what they talk about? Oh, my God, his Wonderlick score. Since when does Wonderlick play football? He might not be able to read a book. I don't give a fuck. Can he read a football playbook? I don't care about whether he can fucking do a test in math or whatever the Wonderlick is. It doesn't matter to me. Can he play football? On every level, that man played football at a high, high level and was drafted behind multiple guys. Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen, like, what are we talking about? Josh Rosen's not in the league anymore. And wow. they'll say he's, he's slender and small. You know what? Lamar Jackson's the same size as Baker Mayfield. But Lamar is small. And Baker's the number one pick in the draft. 
I'm not arguing Baker being number one pick the draft because he was a Heisman Trophy winner and was a monster in college. But Rosen was a fucking ineffective bum who didn't win. Donald was okay. And Lamar Jackson was the Heisman Trophy fucking winner. And we're sitting here acting like this man can't play football. Every time there's a comparison of a black QB to a white QB, the one person replied to me, what about when a white QB is compared to a white QB? Do they ever mention intelligence? Never. Every time you compare a black QB to a white QB, the first thing that comes out of anyone's mouth is, are they intelligent enough? What is their intelligence level? Are you fucking kidding me? Patrick Mahomes had one line where it said, he needs to learn. Learn means he's, he's, he doesn't learn. Really? He needs to learn something. And, and for Trubisky, it was the same shit, but it was not stated as learn. It was needs experience. One is negative, one is positive. And that's written in the, by the exact same guy in the exact same freaking profile. Same year. I read them both. I wanted to compare them. The negatives on black quarterbacks are like this. The negatives on white ones are like this. And then they're rewritten in a way where it makes the black QB drops his ass down and it makes the white QB look like this. So all you Michigan fans who got pissed off, you're fucking fools. Look it up. It's been proven for many, many years, over and over again. You can point out three to me. Trey Lance, who didn't deserve to get picked where he got picked. Anthony Richardson. And there might be one, maybe, I mean, hell, look at where Justin Fields fell to. Justin Fields looked like a world beater in that playoff. And then he's the 15th pick? That was the pick, right, Donald? Yes. Yes, I believe so. I didn't look up to see how many white guys got picked before him. How many times, how many Alabama QBs were a white got picked and gotten flamed out? Matt Jones has been a disaster, and they've been pushing that guy up the fucking rank. They pushed so hard to get him drafted. So I'm sick and tired of hearing the bullshit. White privilege for quarterbacks exists. You don't like it, go fuck yourselves. Michael Penix is better than J.J. McCarthy, and I'll bet anybody right now that Michael Penix will be a star in the NFL and J.J. McCarthy will be out of the league or a backup in five years. I'm done. Uh, Justin Fields was number 11, but still, okay. it was pretty Who went before him? A lot of bumps, but uh, he was no. he was 11. That being said, guys, uh, we are going to wrap up this colorful, entertaining well, episode. To be honest, uh, Justin hasn't that. proved anything either yet, so go ahead. Go ahead. He Let's hasn't. Nick, he hasn't. Give him stability, Nick. We'll see yeah. when he has stability. Oh, yeah, you know who got picked ahead of Justin Fields? Zach Wilson. <laughs> he got picked high. <laughs> Number two, I had a Justin Fields. He got picked really And you're high. telling me that Zach Wilson was a better college quarterback than Justin Fields? Come oh, on, man. His upside. Come on. <laughs> so I'm talking about. There's another example right there.